Good morning. Good morning and welcome to University Baptist Church. Sorry, I was wrapped up in conversation and didn't realize that was the end of the <laughs> prelude. I will light the Christ candle as soon as I walk down, unless someone else wants to do that right now. <laughs> um, I'm Natalie. I'm the senior pastor here. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us, whether you're here in person or online. Um, welcome. I really need my bulletin, but that's okay. We're just going to wing it. <laughs> Kids are always welcome here. We've got little tables in the back and bags with... Uh, sensory worship items out through the back door or through this piano side door. If you'd like to make use of those, please feel free to. Um, also, feel free to get up, move around, do whatever you need. We want to make this a comfortable place for you uh, to engage in worship however it feels right to you. If you're visiting with us, we would love for you. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Gold star for the new music interim. Yay, Brenna. <laughs> <laughs> if you're visiting with us, we would love for you to fill out a visitor's card. You can do that online or the card in the pew back in front of you. That also has a prayer request form that you can write your prayer requests on. And drop that in the offering plate when it goes by a little later on in the service. Again, we're just so glad that you're here. This is the second week of Easter Tide, and so feel free to keep those Alleluia wands, Alleluia ing. There is more in the back and over to the side as well. And we'll be celebrating Easter for six weeks. Easter goes for 50 days, longer even than Lent. Our season of penitence um, is our season of rejoicing, and I think that that's really beautiful. So as we join in worship today, I want uh, to acknowledge that we are meeting on indigenous lands. <coughs> we want to acknowledge especially the Alabama Quixada, Pado, Carrizo, Comacrudo, Quahuiltecan, Comanche, Kikapu, Lipan Apache, Tonkawa, and Isleta del Sur Pueblo, and all the American Indian and indigenous peoples and communities who have uh, been a part of or become a part of these lands and territories in Texas. We offer gratitude and honor to the elders past and present, and we are continuing um, to learn and to work on the commitments that you can find toward the back of your bulletin. I'd um, love for you to take a look at those and be reminded. Um, all right, I'm going to invite Paul up. I think he's next for our call to worship. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. The prayer of the bullet. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, forgive me seventy times seven. Jesus said, be my sheep. In response, we say, it is my heart, take and steal it. Steal it for my words of love. Let us worship God with all our hearts.
Good morning, all. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the good news of God's grace. Any kiddos want to come down to the steps? Can join me. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. Okay. So, it's your friend's birthday today. How old is he? Eight or nine. You want to come sit with me? No. Okay, so I was thinking today about some of the things that can make me a little scared sometimes. Like, I had a really big test last week, and I got scared that I was going to do bad. Or sometimes it can be dark outside when I'm walking home, and that's kind of scary. Or just like little things that make me scared. I was wondering if y'all have any things that can kind of make y'all scared or nervous or things that y'all think other kids might be scared or nervous about? Um, something that I'm nervous about is there's this playground with a climbing thing that goes like this and it's pretty high, but it's a little, um, there's some metal like a uh, dominoes yeah. pattern thing, but with holes in it. Um, on the bottom, and I'm scared, and there's, like, ropes that you climb on up to the top, and I'm scared to, like, fall off the ropes and hit my, and get hurt on the bottom of the thing. Yeah, that sounds really tall and scary. I'd be scared, too. Do you have anything you can think of um, that you're scared of or, like, other kids are probably scared of? Well, I know I'm scared of all kinds of things. I just can't think. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you could be scared of. So David just wrote the psalm that we read about not being scared because God's with us. And David had a lot of scary things happen to him. Do you all know the story of David and Goliath? So it's this story in the Bible where David is just this little guy, just like a normal person, and he is sent out to fight this giant guy like 40 days and 40 nights with his like slingshot and rock. And if like I'm up against a giant with just a slingshot and a rock, doesn't seem like a very fair fight. He's pretty big. But David defeats him because God was with him and God helped him. So even when we have big and scary problems, God takes care of us in so many ways. God says that we're like his shepherd. Well, he is like our shepherd and we're a sheep. And a shepherd takes care of their sheep like all the time. They take them to nice pastures with good grass for them to eat. It takes them to water that's good for them. So I was thinking, what are ways that God takes care of me all the time? You have one? Um, um, I just wanted to say, but I forgot what I was going to say. So some ways that God takes care of me is that I have a roof over my head, I have food in my pantry, I've got a job, I have really good parents that always take care of me. What are some ways that God takes care of y'all? Um, well, when, I keep forgetting what I'm going to say. Okay. You got one, Dom? Yeah. Um, 
I have good parents. I have a good church. I have a good school. I have a house. I and I'm just grateful for that. That's awesome. What do you got? I'm grateful for having a good community that loves me and cares for me. That's a really good one. So we're going to pray and just kind of be thankful for all the ways that God takes care of us all the time, even though they're like big and scary and these impossible things that we're like scared of. And God takes care of us through it all. So if y'all want to bow your heads, does anybody want to pray? Okay. Dear God, please help people that are scared move through it and face their fears. Please let everyone be themselves and let them be scared of what they are scared of. Amen. Amen. Okay. No, you're okay. Dear God, thank you so much for how you take care of us every single day. Even when we have all of these things to be afraid of, you are with us like, you're, like the shepherd that you are. You take care of us in the ways that we need with green pastures and good water and all the ways you provide. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day and this community. That is another way that you take care of us. Amen. All right, guys. For the last seven weeks, we have been following the life and faith of Peter. Despite being one of Jesus' most loyal disciples, Peter still made mistakes. He was faithful and messy, humble and afraid, loving and cautious. Friends, we're a lot like Peter. Despite our faith, we make mistakes. Despite our belief, we carry unbelief. Despite our love, we can cause hurt. So, like Peter, let us return to God in prayer, confessing the truth of our lives. God's grace does not stop with that humble yet fearful disciple. God's grace reaches all the way to us. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Gracious God, like Peter, we crawl out of the boat only to sink. You tell us your truth, and we push it away. We ask about forgiveness and are surprised by abundance. We profess our faith and deny it three times. We run to the empty tomb and leave in silence. Over and over again, we find ourselves wandering along the journey of faith. Tether us to your heart. Forgive our surprise, our denial, and our limited imagination. Call us out of the boat once more. We are eager to return to you. With humble hearts we pray, amen. Friends, the first time that Peter saw Jesus after the crucifixion, Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? This repetition was not because Jesus doubted Peter's word. This repetition was Jesus offering Peter grace. You see, the last time Jesus and Peter were together, Peter said three times, I do not know that man. So when Jesus returned, he asked Peter, do you love me? And in that moment, he allowed Peter to turn his denials into love. Friends, the grace of our God knows no end. When we stumble, when we fall, when we deny God or cause harm, 
Jesus meets us where we are and offers us a second chance. So rest in this good news. Does God love you? Yes. 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 God loves you. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love that never ends. Now, let's share that love with each other by offering the peace of Christ. Here at UBC, we place our hand on our heart and say, may the peace of Christ be with you, and respond with, and also with you. Excuse me, that was a real cough, not trying to get your attention, but hey, it worked. <laughs> That's the best laugh I've gotten in a while, all right. Um, will you join me in the prayer for illumination, followed by our gospel reading? God of second chances and God of new life, we have spent our days wandering. Like Peter, we have milled about through nearly every state of faith. We have had courageous days and convicted days, learning days and questioning days. We have had days where we run to you, days for diving out of the boat, days for deep joy, and days where the pain of the world feels too close to bear. So as we bring our wandering hearts to you, we ask that you draw us in. Allow this story to spark something new in us. Allow this story of grace to give us pause and pull us in. We are listening. Amen. Our reading today, <clears throat> excuse me, is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. <clears throat> After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. Pause. This is after crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus starts kind of popping up in these post-resurrection appearances. Just got to set that scene. All right. Showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. <laughs> he said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of that fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. 
And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. This is the good news of God's grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Brenham and Steve. <clears throat> there are many strange and interesting things about the text that we read just before the anthem, the random number, 153 fish that were caught. I know some of you are into numerology, lots of books and articles you can read about that. I'm looking at you, Jeff. Uh, very interesting, but not what I'm going to talk about today. There's the piece about being let off where you don't want to go. Very interesting. Of course, there's this kind of callback to the fire where Peter has denied Jesus, and then he's at a new fire now, affirming his love for Jesus. There's the different Greek words for love, the different ways that he talks about the sheep. Um, lots of ways we could go and lots of ways I've thought about this in the past. But today, I think after spending so much time with Peter during Lent and Easter, I've seen this a little bit differently. I don't think it, that I would have seen it this way otherwise. Um, we, like I said, it's easy to notice the kind of threefold, you know, yes, I love you, Jesus, kind of in contradiction to Jesus's three denials just a couple weeks ago. But really, when I read this story, it feels like the whole thing 
as kind of flashback after flashback, callback after callback to Peter's journey with Jesus. And I don't know if John meant to do that, maybe not, but we're going to do it today because I think it's really kind of beautiful. It starts in the beginning, right? They're fishing. That's where the disciples were whenever they were called by Jesus that first time. And they even get that miraculous catch again, right? There's this call back to Jesus telling them, put your nets back in again, and then to coming up with abundance. This time, they don't hesitate, right? They throw their nets to the other side immediately. And then after that, we get another call back to, G, uh, to Peter, excuse me, jumping off another boat. <laughs> the last time we saw him jumping off of a boat, he was wanting to walk on water. He was wanting to be like Jesus, right? And he does for a second, and then he starts to sink. This time, he jumps off the boat just as himself. He's not trying to walk on water. He doesn't sink. He swims. He just gets to Jesus as quick as he can. After that, they're back to another meal. Calls back to Jesus' ministry of feeding people with bread and fish before, right? This is not the first time he's done this. Calls back to the meal that they celebrated the night before he was betrayed when Jesus broke the bread, shared a meal with his disciples. Except this time, it's not a dinner leading up to something um, dark and ominous, right? It's a breakfast, and it's leading up to who knows what, a new beginning. We get a call back to the question, right? The questions that Jesus asked of his disciples, except this time, instead of asking them, who do you say that I am? Jesus asks them, do you love me? Do you love me? And then, of course, instead of those three denials, no, 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 I don't know the man, I'm not with him, no, we get three yeses, yes, I love you, yes, I love you, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Each of these moments through this whole story calls back to a memory, calls back to a defining moment in Peter's life and redeems it, right, makes it new calls Peter back to those moments of his winding journey and says, I trust you. You, skeptical you, bold you, insightful you, offensive you, lost the plot you, fearful you, the you that runs away, the you that comes back, I trust you, Jesus says. I accept you. I redeem you over and over, just as you are. Now, do you love me (laughs) as I am, Jesus asks. Not as who you wanted me to be, not as a political leader, not as a king on a throne, not as a national hero. Now that you have seen how this plays out, do you love me still? I think is what Jesus is asking. Do you trust me? Do you accept me as I am? There's this beautiful artwork, I don't know if you noticed, on the front of your bulletin, I'm going to point your attention to, by uh, Nicolette Peñaranda from uh, our Sanctified Art Bundle. And you can't really tell from here, but this is actually, the original art is, I think, two feet by four feet. Um, And it's made almost entirely of wool, wool yarn, which I think is just beautiful. Um, But it's got all of these different symbols in it. These are Adinkra symbols. They are West African symbols that are visual representations of concepts or proverbs or aphorisms um, to call to mind. So you can see kind of in the background this kind of pink line that zigs and zags back and forth. This uh, is a symbol that represents kind of the, the twisted journey of life. And that's the backdrop for this whole piece of art. And then your eyes might go to the sheep. These sheep are representing Jesus and Peter. 
Jesus as the Lamb of God and Peter as one of his sheep. And so in this moment where they're having this uh, conversation on the beach and Jesus is asking him, do you love me? They're both represented here as sheep. And on their chest is the symbol for loyalty and faithfulness. This is a moment where that is front and center. On their face, actually their face, the kind of swirl with the triangle at the bottom, that is the adinkra symbol for harmony and cooperation. And that's uh, what they're made of in this moment as Jesus kind of passes the torch to Peter. There are flowers in the foreground. You can see uh, the kind of uh, almost square with the round edges. Those are the symbol for peace and forgiveness and reconciliation. And then you can see above the sheep this kind of sun. It looks kind of like an eye. This is the symbol for God and the omnipotence, the omnipresence, the, the divine is kind of shining and illuminating this whole scene. Then over to the side, you see the hearts, which usually means love to us, and it does here too, but it means more than that. It means endurance, that kind of love, that kind of patient love. I love this image of this moment because it helps me kind of feel the moment a little more than maybe how I'm used to. It's, it's this full circle moment of Jesus and Peter together. Looking back on a journey, <coughs> excuse me, looking back on a journey with lots of twists and turns, but looking back on it with compassion and with grace and with acceptance. Acceptance is really hard, for me anyway. I don't know about for you. Our culture teaches us a lot about shame, teaches us a lot about <coughs> a constant need to be better. Just walk into any bookstore and take a look at the self-help section. It's going to take up a big chunk of the store. Our culture tells us that accepting who we are will make us lazy or hinder our growth. But that's a lie. That's a lie. And Jesus exposes it here with Peter. In this picture that we have of Peter and Jesus, we have a picture of radical self-acceptance as we are, not as we want to be or wish we would have been. We have a picture of radical acceptance of Jesus as he is, not as we want him to be or wish he would have been. And that kind of acceptance facilitates Peter's growth. It facilitates ours. It nurtures it. It doesn't hinder it. It's from that place, that viewpoint, that Jesus can say to Peter again, follow me. Follow me. Now remember, they're at the same lakeside that they were at when he said it that first time, in the very beginning of their relationship. It's called something different in John, but it's the same lake. He's calling him all the way back to the beginning of their story together. And I wonder, how does this follow me sound different than that first one? How does that hit Peter anew? What are the significant parts in your journey? What are the significant parts in your life with Jesus that he might call you back to if you are standing with him? That he might call you back to even, even now? What are the moments that flash through your mind? Maybe when you were baptized or when you had a mountaintop experience with the divine. Maybe when you did something harmful in God's name. When you walked away, when you came back, when you changed your mind. Some fond memories, I hope. Maybe some cringy memories, too, if you're like me. I hope today God calls you back to those moments with compassion and acceptance and a new perspective. I hope that you can hear Jesus' voice saying to you as it did to Peter, I trust you. 
I accept you. I redeem you just as you are, as you were, as you will be. Every piece of you. Now, do you love me? He asks. That's the question that matters in the end. <coughs> Not as you wanted me to be, <clears throat> but as I am. Not as a genie granting wishes in the sky. Not as a club to bludgeon your enemies with. Not as a divine seal of approval for your nation or your family or your women's basketball team. <laughs> not as even a hammer of justice on unjust rulers. Not as even a fixer of all of humanity's problems. Not as, what did you want him to be? Do you love him as he is? Crucified and risen. If you can, then Jesus invites you, follow me. Follow me. <clears throat> it's not a call we receive just once. It's a call we receive again and again. And it shifts and grows just like we do, just like Peter did. We can look back on our journey with acceptance and compassion, knowing that Jesus was with us all along, right where we were at any given point, when we were wrong and when we were right when we were naive, when we were harmful, and when we were faithful. God was with us, and we can have compassion on our journey. And that is the good news. That is the grace of God that we can find peace with God. And that in these full circle moments, like Peter and Jesus are having in the text today, like we see imaged for us in this artwork, like you've had and will have again in the future. In those full circle moments, Jesus looks different, right? He looks different now than he did when we first met him. And when we come to those moments decades in the future, Jesus may look different to us then than he does to us now. So having compassion on our whole story, on who we are right now, sets us up for who Jesus is calling us to be, for where Jesus is leading us next. This isn't the end of Peter's story that we heard today. It's not even a plateau, right? His ups and downs are going to continue, <laughs> I hate to break it to you, in the book of Acts as he tries to figure out how to lead this growing movement, what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus when he's not there physically. He makes mistakes and missteps. He puts people to sleep with his preaching. One of them falls out a window and dies. I mean, it gets weird, y'all. He has hardships. He's put in jail. He has high points. He has growth. He has changes of mind and heart, like big changes after this moment still. But it's from this place of radical self-acceptance, radical acceptance of Jesus and love of who Jesus actually shows us God is, it's from that place that our story can continue. It's from that place that our story can expand, even if it does look different than what we expected. <clears throat> Beloveds, whatever your story, whatever your journey, whatever our story as a church, whatever our amalgamation of stories looks like, Jesus offers you, Jesus offers us acceptance, compassion, redemption again and again. Jesus says, I trust you. I mean, we feel like that might be a little bit crazy, Jesus, but Still, he says, I trust you. You can take it from here. Feed my sheep. Tend to my little ones. Nourish each other. Be channels of compassion and care for others. And that starts with yourself, right? Just as you are, Jesus calls you again today. Follow me. Thanks be to God. Amen.
join me in prayer. Oh God, we've called you by so many names and none really describe who you are. Let us just be thankful that even though you do know everything about us, you love us and accept us and continually grant us mercy and grace on our journey. We all are sitting here today in different places with joys, sorrows, concerns that weigh heavy on our heart. We are thankful that we do not bear them alone, but you bear them with us. And we lift up those that we know in our congregation and friends of our congregation. We lift up Tana, Selena, Nate, Craig, Dakota, Joe and Ellen, Mary, Aaron, Tiffany, the Govinda family, the family of Jean, Ken, Carly, Bill, Justin and Lindsay, Riker, Tony, Anna, Victor, Jonah, John, and Melinda. And we lift up those that are hurting, um, the trans kids, the, LG, <laughs> the gay kids that are struggling in their families. We lift up Ukraine, those families and those that are Ukrainian here in the U.S. that are hurting for their country. We lift up Israel, Gaza, Palestine, and we are thankful for the times that we can be with others. For the time that Muslim space came and served with us God's family dinner. That there are times that we can come together before you and with you to serve together. Now, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join me in the affirmation of faith printed in the bulletin. We believe in a God who shows up in our lives surprising and catching us off guard in the best of ways. We believe in a God who cares for God's people, a shepherd who longs for her sheep to be fed and tended. We believe in a God who took on flesh, a God whose love changed the world as we know it. We believe that this here and now God invites us out of the boat calling ordinary people like Peter, like us, into a life of service and community. And so we give our hearts. We give our whole hearts and nothing less. Amen. Please join me in prayer. 
As we were reminded by today's gospel reading, Simon Peter cast nets in hopes of catching fish to share food with many. He was disappointed when his effort did not render the desired catch. The voice of Jesus offered Simon advice to cast where he knew fish would be found. Fish were then gathered in abundance. Let the voice of Jesus now be our guide and give us the ability and desire and hope to help others. bring our resources to you in this and in many other ways. We trust you to receive them, multiply them, and use them for your work in our church and in the world. We dedicate these to you and we ask that you help us to use them for your purposes. Amen. 
Amen. Thanks, y'all. <clears throat> you can be seated. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us in worship today. Um, especially want to thank Brenham, our new Brenham Wave, our new uh, interim music director while Jonathan is away. We're so grateful that you're willing to step into this role and just thank you so much. You're um, awesome. And also Steve, our interim organist while Jonathan is away. Thank you so much, Steve. Beautiful job. I was talking to Steve before the service and this is his first Sunday playing on the new refurbished organ, so a much more pleasant experience for him, but it was gorgeous. Thank you so much. We're really grateful for both of you. Um, Easter photos are here. Uh, if you would like to look at the pictures from last week that Anthony took, those are available. There is a link in your bulletin and also in, in the email, I think, last week and probably will be in there again this week. There is a password that you have to type in, and that's in there as well. And you can see our church family photos. They turned out really beautifully. Um, this Friday night is Parents' Night Out from 5 to 8 o'clock for our kids and youth. So if you would like to uh, drop your kids off for uh, just fellowship time while you take a nap in your car, do some shopping, go on a date, whatever you need to do, parents, um, please let me know by Wednesday. I am leaving town on Thursday, so Wednesday is the for real cutoff um, because I got to have everything set up by Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So let me know by 5 o'clock Wednesday and we'll get you set up. Um, and if you'd like to volunteer, I'm still looking for one, uh, at least one volunteer with our youth. And let me just tell you, the youth are amazing. Youth Give a little wave and say how amazing you are. Yes. They're fabulous. They're so fun. And so it really is a treat to get to hang out with them. And um, if you'd like to volunteer for that, please let me know as soon as possible. Awesome. Um, I will be heading out to Charlotte. Where's Jody? He's counting. For the Alliance of Baptist uh, annual meeting. Jody is on the board of the Alliance, and he'll be there as well. I'm pretty sure it's in Charlotte. I was sick all last week, so I'll find out where I'm going as soon as we get through the service. But please say a prayer for me and say a prayer for uh, everyone that's at the Alliance for our learning and for our gathering. This is one of the groups that we connect with most uh, strongly as progressive Baptists, and um, I think it'll be a, a great time. I will be back on Sunday, Lord willing, and my flight doesn't get delayed. But just in case, we will have a guest preacher. The Reverend Dr. Brandon Morgan will be in the pulpit next Sunday, so you won't want to miss that. He is an amazing preacher and human. And i um, really grateful for him stepping in next Sunday. All right. Am I missing any announcements? Oh, uh, You Friends is meeting next Sunday as well after church. So if you're a parent, just get that on your radar. Lucas will be sending more details sometime this week. And we have a reception in the back of the church after worship is done. We'd love to uh, chat with you. If you have any questions about UBC, how to join or how to follow Jesus, reach out to me anytime. Um, would love to talk to you more. All right. Uh, with that, I'll invite you to rise in body or spirit for our song of sending. as you go throughout this week, may you be surrounded by the length and width, height and depth of God's love for you, here and now, just as you are, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>